haven't tried to be anybody that I'm not. People look at me and say, what's well, a white guy doing with lowriders? You just gotta be you, work really hard, and you have to figure out what you really want out of life and what you want, and just go for it. It'll happen. You, know, you may strike out a couple times, but you'll eventually get there if you, if you work hard enough at it. My name is Michael Gray. My dad was a police officer, and my mom worked in the grocery business. They're both very hard workers, yeah. My dad was a car guy. Growing up, I would say at least once a year, he'd come home with something new. Never a new car, but new to us. You're little, you know, dad's the hero, so whatever dad's into, you're into. I mean, this car is a big piece of my family. We built a shop behind the house, like a shrine to the car. I mean, this car will never leave my possession. I'll, I'll have this thing forever. It's a 1960 Impala. It was a nice car when I got it, great driver, so wanted to take it to the next level. It didn't have any suspension in it. It was pretty much a stock car, but in pretty good shape. So took it to my friend John Kennedy, Bowtie Connection, and we ripped the frame out, took it to homies. They, they wrapped the frame, and Big Frank did the hydraulic system in it, and it's just a perfect car. It's exactly the vision I had for it when, when we built it. Had it about seven years now, I guess, and it's been real good to me. I kept it pretty traditional. You know, a lot of, a lot, there's a lot of different styles of lowriders. You know, you got the lifestyle guys with just incredible paint, just awesome cars. I wanted to build something really traditional. The engine's all stock, just got a little bit of chrome on it. Uh, pinstriping, no murals or anything like that. Of course, in California, you have to have Zenith wheels, right? They have the whole Dayton Zenith thing, but you know, West Coast, you gotta have, gotta have Zenith. You saw the movie McFarland, that's kind of like the town I grew up in, in Durham, California. Just, just a little bit, about 20 miles out of Chico, and it's a farming community. We had one gas station, one grocery store, one hardware store, and just tons of farming. So I spent my summers working in the orchards and the bean fields. What I did mostly was those big 20-foot sprinkler pipes, on to the next one, that's what we did in the bean fields. It's all muddy, and we'd change a whole field all the way across in the morning, go home, take a nap, and then you'd come back, and then you'd move them over again, because you had to move them two times, sometimes even three times a day. A lot of work. I think it gave me a really strong work ethic. There's a lot of work, and the guys are counting on you. I mean, you're all moving pipe. If somebody's slacking, that's not cool, and they'll, they'll call you out in a second. So you had to keep up with, with everyone, and <laughs> it was a lot of work. And you know, I knew I needed to get a, a good education and get a job that paid well. It taught me I didn't want to do that the rest of my life. One day, one of the guys showed me his Polaroid. Back then, that was the thing, right? You don't have the phone, but the Polaroid of this lowrider that he had just finished building, and it was incredible. So after work, went over and checked it out in his garage, and I was just in awe. But, you know, someday I'm gonna have one of those. But you know, I'm a high school kid, not making much money, and so we got Volkswagens. You know, me and a bunch of my friends. That was kind of the thing back then. You had the cow bugs, and then you had the, the mini truckers. Ever since high school, I've been tearing apart the cars and lowering them in the garage, and kind of got into that. You know, never could afford them, Impala or the you know the real cars. But did that for years, and then. Got to a point in my life where you can't really go to school full time and, and work and, and build cars. Anyone who builds cars knows there's a strong financial commitment that goes along with that. You know, I, I kind of put cars on the side. And senior year of high school, we had an accounting class. A lot of people were really struggling with it, and I liked it, and it was easy for me. So I thought, well, this is it. This is what I can do. So I was president of the accounting society at Chico State, and I invited the CFO from Harris to come speak to our group. Just a really cool guy. And I said, you know, I want to come work for you. And he said, great, come see me when you graduate. So I graduated, showed up in his office with my diploma. I think he kind of didn't really even remember who I was. <laughs> and gave me a job the next day.
I'm the Chief Financial Officer for Caesars Palace. I've been in this role at Caesars for about eight years. I've been with the company around 23, 24 years. Right away, I want to go to casinos. Now, it's always been an attraction for me. My, my grandpa was always a big gambler. He, he lived in, in LA, and he'd always go to Vegas and come up to Reno and Tahoe. And it's kind of been in my family as well. It's a fun industry. Everything that you can think of happens under a casino. You've got retail, you've got shows, you've got gambling, you have awesome food and beverage, you've got hotel. There's just so much going on and you get to meet some really cool people. My colleagues are, you know, they, they spend their Sundays at the country club playing golf and which is fun, you know, I, I like to play golf too, but you know, my passion is the low riders. A couple of years ago, I bumped into one of the colleagues at work, one of the presidents of, of the casino and I had my wife beater on and my, and my hat and, and I said, hi, and she kind of looked at me weird. She said, hi, and she said, Eileen, it's Michael. She's all, whoa, I didn't even recognize you. It was, it was pretty funny, because I don't really fit the mold of my job, but you know, I'm me and I'm, I'm true to who I am. Perfect day is to load the family up in the car, head down to the park. Well, you're there with all your friends, your family's there, everyone's barbecuing, and you, you know, sit and look at the cars go by. Everyone who's into low riding, it's very much an inclusive culture of, hey, come look at my car, come look what I did to it. And we just love to share stories of each other. Look at this part, I've been trying to find this forever. I got it, put it on my car. That's what it's all about. When you have a vision for a car and you go get the rusty pile of crap that you start with and, and turn it into this beautiful work of art, there's a lot of dedication there. You, you have to have a, a really clear vision of what you want to do and the dedication to see it through and a lot of hard work to earn the money to make it happen. I have a genuine passion for my job. So if you don't have a genuine love and passion for what you do, you're never gonna be successful. It's a dedication. You have to know what you want to do and go for it. So my son tells me things that he wants to be there, just crazy things. And I said, you can do it, whatever you want to do. I mean, I believe that with every bone in my body. You just figure out what you want to do and make sure that's what you really have passion for and what you really do want, you'll get there. You just have to stay focused and make it happen. Nobody's going to do it for you. Make sure it's something that, that's going to make you happy. My name is Michael Gray. I'm the Chief Financial Officer at Caesars Palace, and I'm a low rider role model.